Welcome to KentuckySports.co radio show. We're not fair, but we are balanced. Joined here by Tyler Bloyd and Hank Garrett. Tyler was just telling me some very impressive stories about his time at the Quarry recently. Beautiful Quarry out there in the lovely Oldham County. Also got Hank here, and I'm, I'm Kelly Patrick. Um, got some good stuff we're going to talk about today. First thing that I want to touch on, I don't know about you guys, is... Kentucky Derby winning horse, the trainer of Mind That Bird, his name's Chip Woolley, was caught urinating right next to a, a slot machine in Iowa. What do you guys think of that? He couldn't leave the table, man. He had he was hitting he was hitting hot and he just he knew he couldn't go to that bathroom. It was too far of a walk. He probably had to go to another, you know, another floor or something. His his quote was I don't know what I was thinking. He then said, I messed up. I know I did, and it's something that will never happen again. It's a regrettable situation. I went and met with the Prairie Meadows people, and we've gotten it taken care of. I also read where he said, I, you know, I made a mistake. It's just not going to happen again. I don't know what I was thinking. Sounds to me like he just made a decision. He wasn't blackout drunk. He just made a decision. It was a good idea to go ahead and pee on or right next to a slot machine inside a casino. Well, he's still probably living off his derby winnings, uh, being that they bought Mind That Bird for such a low purse. And That's they were, right. They were kind of accidental trainers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's the, the guy that wore the cowboy hat and the long curly black hair. I think that's as going back as, as the story developed with Mind That Bird, uh, that's who he was. So he probably just has a good time. He's probably, since that derby, you know, that was – 2009 so i mean since then and probably still is he's just living like a rock star you know why not doing what he can they say he'll hang out in the back of churchill downs with just the casual fans and just you know drink it up and talk to anybody who will listen to him and supposedly he's a very personable guy who apparently just made a honest bad mistake yeah that's you know that's kind of when you say it like that that is good to hear because some of these trainers are just too big for life for me um kind of the persona that they lead uh it's calmed down a little bit but you know in the era of Dwayne lucas and nick zito and you know baffert. baffert baffert's still in the mix a little bit but those other two guys have, have died down um you know i just don't think that that is you know what horse racing is all about you know when dale romans won what was that the the preakness the second, yeah. le- the second leg, Preakness. when Dale, Ro- Dale Romans won the Preakness, you know, you get to look at that guy, you know, he's your he's your everyday guy. He's not, you know, <clears throat> wearing, you know, $5,000 suits with impeccable haircuts and, you know, have to get ready for the for the local TV cameras. So, you know, with this, it, it, it is kind of refreshing that he's kind of an everyday guy uh, that just made a bad mistake and pissed on a slot machine. <laughs> And Deadspin will find you. I, I see your little quote there. That's AJ Delario. That's the uh, the editor for Deadspin. If you do if you do something bad in the world of sports, Deadspin will find you. Makes for good material for sure. I mean, it's it's exciting. When I heard it, I'll be honest, I was you pissed yourself. I, I won't say I pissed myself, but I was pretty excited about talking about it on the air. Yeah, and, and did he do this in like full view? He said that he did not do it. Where one of the quotes I heard. I think I heard Lachlan McLean earlier saying it was that one of his quotes, Chip Woolley's quotes was, ain't no, ain't nobody saw me do it. And apparently he was caught on camera. He was trying to be polite about it. He wasn't doing it in front of anyone, but unfortunately there were cameras on him and he was arrested. <laughs> that even makes it better to me. I guess he never watched the movie Casino, The Eye in the Sky. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, they're always watching. If you're going to get caught, you know, pissing somewhere, it's probably a casino. Just like Eagle Eye. I watched that last night. What was that? Eagle Eye. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah. Everybody's, yeah, you're always being watched. What we got next there, uh, Kelly? We got the uh, Louisville Cardinals defensive unit coming up for this season is projected to be the third-ranked unit in the Big East. Tyler joked over there that that meant they'd be maybe 50th in the country. Maybe true. But all Louisville has to worry about is how they fare in the Big East. Really, 
with it being a BCS school, if they can compete in the Big East, and if Jeremy Ride or Victor Anderson excels and their offensive line does well, they're able to move the ball, which I think is very plausible, they could actually be a good team, especially with their defensive unit being projected to do well. Yeah, I think that'll definitely be the, the strong suit of you know of the U of L team, uh, depending on how they run the ball, you know, and how Teddy Bridgewater comes. There's there's just so many questions, uh, really, with UK and U of L. Uh, who are the two teams ranked ahead of them? It's a good question. I don't have the you, list you in front of me. List, I don't. I, I don't know. The, but to be you know to be perfectly honest, Kelly, would you agree with me? This is it, this year will be as bad as the Big East has been since the inception. That's what it looks like. Fortunately yeah. for Louisville, as long as it doesn't result in, well, having Louisville could, TCU Louisville could go to the you know to the BCS. Are they in it this year? No, having yeah. TCU that they'll be at. You're right. This is the downside of it. Having that TCU will probably be dominating the Big East in a couple of years. Not this upcoming season, but 2012. It it will be a down year, but fortunately they do have some strength coming to it, which will coincide with at least for Louisville. Their program probably hitting a, a good spell. I, I would think they, they won this team. All they lack right now is some experience, really. Oh yeah, definitely. And to go with along with the other programs in the Big East, it seems like Louisville found their guy. Uh, hopefully, West Virginia will get the right guy in there. Um, Pittsburgh, I don't know. If, you know, I don't know. They had some chaos. Yeah, I don't know if really you know they're a stable situation. But I mean, you can't be considered a power conference to continue year in and year out with the, with the amount of coaching turnover that's, you know, that's been in the Big East. You Everybody know, wants to come to the SEC. Okay, producer Matt here just pulled up for me, and the defensive, let me see here. That is the rankings of the linebackers in the Big East. I'm sorry. An ESPN blogger, Andrea Adelson, who's been ranking the Big East Positional players, you know, they'll rank maybe the wide receivers for the car, for the Big East and tell where Louisville's wide receivers stack up against the rest of the conference, which might I add, she, in my opinion, dramatically understated how talented Louisville's receivers are. But what she rated was Louisville as having the number three linebacking core in the Big East. Ahead of them, number one is South Florida. Number two is UConn followed by Rutgers, West Virginia, Pitt, Syracuse, and Cincinnati rounds out the, the top eight. They got Dexter Dexter Hyman and Daniel Brown. And although they did acknowledge that recently they lost the Brandon Golson transfer guy, they do have, you know, some talent in the in the the linebacker core. Which were you Verts to a uh, eighth place preseason prediction as of today. A lot of people have a lot of predictions, Tyler. Hey, I'm just going by what I see. With the preseason predictions, though, not to defend or you know go against Louisville, they're way out there. It's oh yeah, this year. I mean, hell, Oregon's Oregon or not Oregon, Auburn is fifth in the I think the SEC. Mm-hmm. You know, what does I it mean they, they lost a lot though? Yeah, but. Still, you got to kind of give them a little bit champ, more, yeah. you know. I mean, there's, there's. But they're looking at previous, the year before, decent squad to this past year. Cam Newton taking you to promised land to losing Cam Newton. Also, the Fairley guy, Nick Fairley, he's gone. He was probably as dominant as Cam Newton, Newton the defensive tackle. He, he, yeah, he joined the Lions. He's he did a beast. What what pick was that in the draft, Tyler? Three, three. What did Cam Newton go? One, one. one. That's right. I knew yeah. that. So. <laughs> So two of the top three picks in the conference, and now you say that they're ranked fifth in the SEC. I think in the West, actually. I oh, wow. Four teams ahead of them in the West. Well, just I believe SEC. it. You got Bama, LSU. They lost um, two of the best players in the uh, country. Georgia and probably. Georgia's in the East, but Arkansas. I mean, uh, yeah, not Georgia, Arkansas. That's right. Yeah. I don't. Uh, they're probably ahead of both Mississippi schools, I guess. Yeah, so I th- they're, they're fourth. They're fourth, yeah, which is fourth. still, you know, crazy. Yeah, and I mean, I just think, you know, I just think when you're playing at a championship caliber – level and it's not like Oregon lacks athletes you know they certainly they got everybody back yeah so I mean I I would I don't know I don't know know how you rank them ahead of Arkansas even though it could be Arkansas sneaks out I think this is a year you know 
where a team like Arkansas wins the SEC. Oh, Bobby, Possibly a national championship. Oh, Bobby Petrino running that offense that we all know about here around here. I don't have a problem with Bobby Petrino. Oh, yeah. He's, good. He's a great guy. I wouldn't make the argument that any coach is a great guy. Tyler, would you? Um, I don't know. We don't know them. I'm going to say – Let's not let's not try to judge people. Okay? Lou Holtz is a great guy. You think so? Just because he has a – He has great hair. I, that brings me into another theory of mine. Oh, no. If you have a lisp or a speech impediment, no one's going to question whether you're a good guy or not. You should be in sales. You'd make a lot of money if you could have a lisp or a speech impediment and confidently try to sell something. I don't question whether someone's lying to me. Lou Holtz has a speech impediment or a lisp. Therefore, everybody thinks he's automatically a great guy. Can you guys debate with that? Does anyone disagree with that? I saw him do a magic trick on TV, and it just <laughs> it, it amazed me, and it got me. I was locked right there. Oh, he's a he he is a great public speaker. I've seen a couple of his public speaking events. You know, he's he's a great motivator. But I don't know if I've expressed this on the show. <laughs> I am an absolute Notre Dame hater. Uh, I think we've you know, heard that a few times. I, I have, yeah. <laughs> but it seems like they have him brainwashed, though. You know, he did coach at South Carolina. After that, he coached at Arkansas before he coached at Notre Dame. I think he coached at North Carolina too. Yeah, I mean, he's coached at other places and had success. But it just leads back to the. And granted, that is where he won his national title. I understand that, but it's it, it, you're just the ultimate Notre Dame defender. Uh, I just hate it. I, hey, quick question, not to change subjects. Going back to your last topic of the Oregon having everybody back, do you think they'll be back to the national championship? Auburn or Oregon? I mean, no, Oregon, Oregon, having everybody returning. I, it's it's so it's so interesting uh, with college football. I could definitely see that playing out. Uh, I haven't. I don't really know what the you know what the Pac-10 holds, but mm-hmm. I think they should. You know, if they win the Pac-10, you know, you're automatically going to have an SEC champ in there. So it really depends on what the Big Twelve. So you're basically has. screwed. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't. I don't think the Big Ten. Who's screwed? Big Ten without Terrell Pryor. The nation. Uh, you know, being able to put a team in there. People say the. I hope what, they get. I hope they go down and burn. Yeah, I hate Ohio State. Not to cut things off here, we do have a commercial break coming up in about 30 seconds. After we get back from our break, you're going to see Tyler, Bloyd, and I debate who is the coach who complains more, Rick Pitino or Calipari. Make sure you join us back after our commercial break and see who is the whinier coach. We'll be right back with you. 